Hey, this is Matt once again. Welcome back to another video. It's another paid request, this time for Jonathan once again. Thank you so much for that. And for those interested in requesting any type of videos, topics, reactions, commentaries, reviews, re-reviews, topics, rankings, tier lists, whatever, feel free to send it either directly to my PayPal or join my Patreon. Both links are down below in the info box. And this is for Cyborg, which I'm always willing to talk about Cyborg and movies like that any day and three times on Tuesday because I love this film to death and it's also I'm always open to I'm always open to that because I like to think I got a little bit better as a reviewer a little bit not too much also throughout the years you learn more about the production you learn more about the movie so maybe I have a little bit more to say about it like for example Cyborg I I think that was the first John Glaw Van Damme film I ever saw. And I am a huge John Glaw Van Damme film fan. I've seen pretty much all of his movies. Lately it hasn't been much, but I love a lot of his older films. I love Bloodsport, Kid Bosher. My all-time favorite is Hard Target. I love Time Cop. I like Sudden Death. I just don't like the doubles he has in the fights because of, I'm guessing, his drug problem. I get it for dangerous stunts, but for fights... And it's like these wide shots, that's not him. He's just in for the close-ups. I think that's distracting. But I still like Sudden Death. You know, I like Double Impact. I like Universal Soldier. Love that movie. Cyborg is one of my personal favorites. I do see people look at it think it looks cheap, it looks hokey. Call it nostalgia. You can throw it into that pile, sure. But Cyborg is my second favorite Van Damme film after Hard Target. I didn't chalk up the nostalgia. But there's just moments that just hit me in a satisfying, entertaining level. That despite, it does have flaws, don't get me wrong, it does have flaws. But it has enough awesome or cool pinpoint moments that make me enjoy it immensely despite its issues. Now it's directed by Albert Payoon, who sadly has passed away. Now Grad was not a fan of his work in the past 20 some years. If I'm really being honest, there's probably maybe five films of his I like. This one, Nemesis, The Sword and the Sorcerer, Dollman. Maybe there's one more if I if I look through it. His filmography. Uh, Cyborg is my favorite, although I do really like Nemesis. Then probably Dollman, and then Sword and the Sorcerer. Again, there may be one more. But I'm not big on Captain America. I'm not big on the later stuff he did. Like Ticker, I think he did. And the Nemesis sequels, I hated. But Cyborg, this is when Jarno Van Damme was very fresh. He had done Bloodsport and Tip Boxer. They were successful. And then he got this movie. If I understand, I would probably wanted Chuck Norris. His canon films. Chuck Norris did a lot of canon films. Whether it be Invasion USA, whether it be Missy and Action movies, but what they led to another, they said, well, we got this new guy called John Ronald Van Damme. Now, Van Damme was not adamant, as in he wasn't so fluid with his English. He's Belgium, and even with that said, I still liked, you could still see he had the it factor, he had that star factor. You looked at him and the way his stance, his face, his look, his presence. And I think Van Damme knew that his body would be the way to sell his acting and action to begin with. And you see what the way the film is where there's slow motion and he's going towards, he's got the head and the eyes and he's got the package to make him a star. At this point, he might not have been the greatest actor. I do think he's a good actor now. People disagree, I'm sorry. Watch JCVD. Watch Wake of Death. Watch uh, In Hell. Watch, what was it? Uh, Until Death. Just look at his acting. He's really good. Back then, he knew he had limits, so he let his body do the action. That's why it makes sense where he has a little bit of vocabulary. And even when he does talk, I like his accent. I just, as a kid, I'm like, this guy is cool. And he's doing these tits and punches and these 360 tits. 
as a kid, he was one of the first martial artists I saw and grew up with. Before the, all these other guys, way before Bruce Lee, John Van Damme was the first, probably could have been the first martial artist I saw on a movie screen. And I left a very indelible impression in my mind because of that. So they have a bunch of sets that were going to be used. His canon films were going to do Masters of Universe 2. They were going to do a Spider-Man movie. They were, going, they were trying to be a bigger company. It failed. Because they had Superman 4, and that was a big bomb. They had Masters of Universe. Did not do that well. The, over the top, they put money into that with Sylvester Stallone. I love that movie, but it was a complete bomb. They tried to be bigger because they wanted to be a bigger studio and be Fox, be Paramount, be all these companies at the time. It failed. So then they lost the rights to Mattel, I think had He-Man, uh, Marvel with Spider-Man. They lost the rights to this stuff. So we got all these sets. We need to make a movie. Okay, well, we worked it, do some stuff, make it a post-apocalyptic. And the budget was like $500,000. Anyway, I think the movie doesn't look too shabby for a $500,000. There are movies nowadays that go straight to streaming or straight to video or straight to streaming that cost double, triple that. Fine, you want to take the inflation, then cost the same. And they look way worse than this, whether it be because they add filters or crappy CGI or this. I like the way it looks. As cheap of a budget it is, I see elements that look like a landscape, that look like a post-apocalyptic. You know, I like the map painting at the beginning and the narration by our villain Vendor, played by Vincent Klein. It's not his voice, but it's him and body. I love that speech. I love when you see these two individuals and you find out one is a cyborg that's the key to the cure of this virus, this plague, and she needs she needs to get to Atlanta and the bad guys want her because they want to control the cure and have that power but then she comes across Van Damme who is a slinger as they call it and he gets wrecked for a bit but he goes after first to kill Fender because of a bad story which we find out later in the film but ultimately to save her and get her to Atlanta where she belongs but you see these two individuals come out and I looked at the landscape it looks like post-apocalyptic there's people hung and crucified and garbage and shit everywhere Simple, but effective. And I know Eva Payoon wanted to make a rock opera. And I saw his director's cut. I absolutely despised it. Uh, I don't know if the video is still up. Because it was a really, really old video. But I saw like cyborg director's cut. I feel ripped off. And I want my money back. I did ultimately did sell it. I did... Not only got my money back, I got a little bit of profit too, so it actually worked out for the best. But I hated the director's cut. I know in the director's cut, Van Damme's voice is dubbed by another actor. It's trying to be more like black and white type of thing. There's all these monologues trying to be very deep and very deep thoughts and deep soliloquies and paragraph to paragraph of diatribes of like a Shakespearean play type. Um, there's less action in the director's cut. It tries to be more, it felt more pretentious. Uh, I'm sorry, Albert Pyron, but it felt more pretentious. I just see why, when that was shown, the audience hated it. I remember reading somewhere that only one out of 100 people s said they liked it. So apparently, John Van Nam taught the canon and said, hey, I reworked some of Bloodsport, because people don't realize, him and I think Shadow Ledge, they reworked Bloodsport, because that had a first cut that wasn't received well. They did the same thing here. John L. Van Damme, Shadow Ledge, give us a few months, let's re-edit the film, let's add some things. They did, and to me, I think it was a miles, miles better film. It felt shorter, it was shorter, it felt tighter paced, the action scenes have a bit more oomph to them in terms of editing. And the ending, there is added action sequences to give more of a fuck yeah for Van Damme. Because in the original director's cut of Cyborg, the Biter Offender just punched him. Van Damme didn't fight back. 
you punch him some more, Van Dam didn't fight back. Then Van Dam tries to stab, Fender blocks it, gets punched again. Van Dam does maybe one punch and then stabs the guy, and it's over. And when you watch the film, you can tell the stuff that was added in. But now that I know, it's like, it's not flawless, but like if you watch the movie again, it's in the rain, there's the bad guy Fender, there's Van Dam. There's a bit where Van Dam's like here, and you see the background is much more blue. Like over here is much more blue, and Van Dam's doing these punches. That was all added in after the fat. It's not in the original cut. That's why the background is like a lot more blue. And they also added in the final bit of the fight. Where Van Dam gets the girl and Fender pushes them into this room with all these chains. None of that was in the original cut. Which is like, to me, one of the best parts of the movie. Where Van Dam gets his revenge and he you know, gets Fender's arm and ticks him and elbows and rams his head through the wall and ticks him and ticks him some more into this hook. None of that was in the original cut. Such a satisfying bit in the theatrical cut. In the re-edited and with additional photography. I don't know if Van Dam. I don't know if Sheldon Lettuce shot that stuff. I don't know if Van Dam shot that stuff. Or who did? Because it seemed like by that point, Albert Pyroon was kind of gone. So, I, I respect Albert Pyroon and what he filmed. But I think Van Dam and Sheldon Lettuce saved the film for me. They, they really did. And yeah, I think the way the, the movie looks for $500,000... Uh, the store, I don't mind the store in the director's cut, uh, but I, I do love the store in the original, and in the theatrical cut, I do love that store. Boom, 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 It had this nice mood and elevation of this momentum during the fight scenes, during the foot chase sequences. I love the store that's in the theatrical finished product. Again, I like the score in the director's cut, but I like the score here. I'd be curious to see the theatrical cut and they put the director's cut score in there. If someone did that fan cut of that, I'd be curious to give it a, a watch. I have the theatrical cut of Cyborg, but I have the director's cut music. I'd be curious to see that, but I do love the, the score we have here. Uh, Van Damme, like I said, he wasn't too studied in the English language to have a flow to it, but that's why he has a man of few words. And I think about it, another thing that appealed to me so much as a kid, this is Van Damme's really his first one-man army movie. What I mean by that is just a guy, and there's a bunch of people, and he tits and kills all their asses. I still own with Rambo, and... I mean, it's not guns a-blazing like them, but... Think of Van Damme's career before that. You had no, no Retreat, No Surrender, where he was a bad guy. You had Black Eagle, which he was a bad guy. And a terrible movie. Bloodsport, Martial Arts Tournament. Very different vibe. Tip Boxer, a bit more of a rocky vibe. Something that happened to someone he loved. So you say a little bit of a Rocky IV vibe. Where Apollo's killed, or in this case his brother is paralyzed, and he's training to be better and to fight the bad guy at the end among their rules and their area, their land I should say but Van Damme had not done like a one man army and this was the first one where he's fighting and killing and kicking ass in that way and that was cool to see and uh, Van Damme I think as an action star great to see he was great in his element, his kits and his punches and his splits, and his 360 hurricane kits. Beautiful to look at. Vincent Klein, he had the right body. He had the Maid Foster eyes. Maid Foster, who was in They Live and Leviathan, and he had the right look and big body stretcher. But when you hear his real voice, it's a very different voice. So I think. 
Viking Samurai did an interview with Sheldon Ledich, and Sheldon Ledich mentioned Cyborg, or they brought up Cyborg, and he mentioned, in part of the editing process, they got a different guy to voice it, and it was Branscombe Richmond. He's a guy who was in Commando. If you ever seen a film called The Take Your Beverly Hills or Ken Wall? He's one of the guy, one of the main bad guys. Hey, football player, you're shooting out Ken Wall. He was in Steven Seagal's Hard to Kill. I think he's he's one of the people Seagal. I think Seagal's like fucking with his hand and it's like, you're the guy that killed my wife and and such. It's been a while since I've seen that movie, but if you look up, he was on the TV show Renegade. I believe he was on that TV show. Branscombe Richmond. If you look him up, if you've seen enough of those films like I have, and they, you may recognize him, he's the voice of Fender. And I thought that voice worked so well to be a very intimidating bad guy. Obviously, it's probably a bit altered, but it even with Branscombe Richmond, and then they probably altered the voice a bit in post production, but love the voice of Fender. I think it works well as your your main villain. <clears throat> Now, I will admit, to be fair, are there issues? Sure. There are some slow spots in between the action sequences. The supporting cast is not the best acting. Uh, there's a girl that he, Van Damme meets who tries to kill him because she doesn't know who he is, but then they become allies and she joins him. She's not the best actress. Some of the other supporting actors, not the best in terms of acting. I said in the um, when the ash is down on screen, some of the first half is little slow spots, like they go to this market, and Van Damme sees this kid that reminds him of his backstory. In the backstory flashback, there's a girl who Van Damme is with. She's not the best actress either. Her dialogue delivery is not that natural. So, supporting cast, appreciate in terms of performances. But when I said there's a lot of these little elements that build up to be a satisfying experience, what I mean by that is moments in my nostalgic brain that remind me of my childhood. Seeing this movie countless times. You know, the music, the beginning, with the monologue, where Fenders explain what happened. They want to tear. Why? I like the misery. I like the suffering. I like this world. Love the death. Like the misery. Or certain lines Fender says, like, I'm going to give you the horror show. And he shows a disembodied head that he cut off. Or. Even when they're they're fucking up these people and they're killing all these people, it's like, hey asshole, I don't like the water. You don't go swim to Atlanta. Or even at the end where Vanda's like Fender and Fender's like fucker. I love that stuff. It just these little exclamation points. Uh, the backstory, how it culminates in this fucked up situation where this little girl has to hold these barbed wire to hold her family in place or they don't fall to their pot their death in this well and you see the barbed wire ripping through his, her flesh and ripping through her hands such a crazy or fucked up idea you know the scene where Van Damme being crucified and like you know people say what would JC do as in Jesus more like what would JC do as a John Claw John Claw is like I ain't gonna be crucified today and not like the other guy I'm gonna kick the fucking thing down Fender you know I remember as a kid going yeah that's my comic book movie that's my superhero movie in, in this way and he's bloodied up and mangled up and he's kicked in the shadows cross two two and the way it's edited I really do think the editing is underrated like when he's kicking the cross and it goes back to this flashback and back and forth, back and forth. And he screams, ah! And a lot of people don't like this editing technique, but I love it. There's a, a lot of Van Damme early films had this. Where he does a punch, but then you see the punch from like three angles. And it becomes like a music, like a song rhythm. So when he punches, it's like, pa, pa, pa! 
it does a tick. Ba ba. So maybe it does one tick, but through alternate with editing and alternate angles, it seems like he tipped the die three times when in reality he only tipped him once. And I think they did a lot of that in re editing to make these action scenes seem a bit more with a punch and satisfying. More a bit more oomph to it. Like yeah, a lot of people don't like the editing style. I loved it. I loved I miss seeing that in Van Damme movies. You say because I grew up with it. Okay, well I still liked it. Cause it you know, gave the fights a, a like the rhythm of a song. Pa 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 pa, cha cha cha. Yeah, that type of stuff. I don't know how else to describe it. And I love that. I love the little blade that come out of his foot. And he does this beautiful tit to hit the guy in the neck. And when you really first see Van Damme kicking ass among these ruins. And you just see him just one after the other after the other. Even at the end in the rain, he blots and he turns and stabs a guy. There's one guy he tits like you know, 15 fucking times, tits him to some fire, and blows up. You see Van Damme's character fly back. I'm like, this is fucking awesome. Oh shit. I love the gun he has that's like shooting nails and shooting nails into people's necks and stuff. And in terms of editing, uh, there's bits of slow-mo, like when Fender has one of the, the ladies on the ground knocked out and Van Damme walks up and he's got that look. I'm like, that's a movie star look. That's a movie star presence. When he's walking up, he's tipped this guy's ass, tipped this guy's ass. Or in the sewer, when they're trying to get away, and you have a bad guy looking around, and you see the reveal that Van Damme is doing the splits on top of these, like, pillars, and he's looking down. And for people that want to say this is an absolute garbage film, look at the editing in that scene. Where it's edited to Van Damme looking down, guy looking up. Van Damme looking down more, guy looked up some more. And the music, even the music builds up that momentum. Down, guy looking up. Van Damme looking down more, looking up. And then, chi chi chi. Now, I do wish some of the violence was not edited. It feels like the violence was edited. And that's why I was curious about the director's cut. Because I thought the director's cut was, oh, it's going to be much more violent. Because you, you see, like, some stuff seemed a bit edited for violence. I thought we were going to see more of that. No, we saw, I would say, less of that. And some people say it's more violent. I don't think that's the case. At least in all instances. I, it's been a while since I've seen it. I don't remember it being the case where we saw a lot more violence. Maybe there's like, at one point, maybe there's a body they find that some dogs mangled or something. Like, But like other attributes that I would think you'd be more violent, it just it didn't feel that way for me. Maybe not. Maybe it's been a while since I've seen it. But I do remember the other stuff being shitty. Oh, another in the director's cut. At the very, very end, they made this kind of nihilistic, pessimistic ending where Van Damme got the lady, him and his kind of adopted daughter, they go off. And then you find out that she and the aunt, the cyborg, these other guys are going to do something with the cure and they're like bad guys in the director's cut. I'm like, what the fuck? No wonder they cut that shit out in the theatrical. I love the, the sweet music at the end that plays... Maybe he's the cure for this world. I know I'm going over the place, but I just, I'm gushing about the film because that's how much I love it and that's how much I enjoy it. I still really enjoy Cyborg. Again, there are some slow spots in between the action that's not the most exciting. Again, some of the supporting, at cat, the supporting cast, especially the actresses, not the strongest. You tell some there's some editing around the violence that's a bit irritating but Van Damme is a badass Fender is a fun uh, villain with the voice and the look and the get up uh, yes I know it's funny that a lot of the character names are after guitars because that's what our Pyunes a uh, Gibson Rickenbacker it's a hell of a name for your lead character but then all these moments I'm mentioning about, you know, the, the crucifixion scene and the violent stuff in the flashback and the fight scenes and the action bits and I mean, what they were able to accomplish making them look like a post-apocalyptic world 
for you know five hundred thousand dollars, pretty commendable, especially when compared to a lot of other low budget films. As I said, liking the music, some of the editing, how they utilize the fights. So again, it's like a nice. I'm gonna say the song thing again, but I already repeated myself. But I fucking love Cyborg. Fender fucker. Yeah. I, I love it. I just I I'm gushing about it. I love Cyborg. It's one of my favorite Van Damme films, one of my favorite Canon films. It just hits a lot of the right notes for me to overlook the flaws. So love Cyborg. With that said, thanks for watching. Take care. We'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.